All right, going live. Haven't uh, gone live. Haven't gone live or done anything like that in a while. Figured I would do something at least, at least to give my viewers something. Holy shit, you guys. And, uh, you know, just today, you know, I realized that people always love the shill content, you know, coming back to shills, talking about these guys. It's really strange how I never would have thought that my channel would just become an anti-propaganda channel. You know, when, when I first went to China and, uh, you know, I always thought that my channel was going to be one of those, you know, those go to China, those, uh, show people China, and, uh, you know, it, it became something different, right? So I'm just going to spend a little time here um, to let a few people come in as I haven't streamed in so long that, of course, I don't, I don't expect much. But, of course, today, Nathan Rich. Nathan Rich is uh, – Nathan Rich was one of the original, like, reasons for – getting into the shill information you know he, he was just um nathan was one of the shills that was really kind of in the beginning unbearable for me like i uh i seen a lot of his content and it was just very obvious that he was literally saying the opposite of what was going on and was becoming successful doing it and I think a lot of people in the beginning didn't know how to take that. And he became famous really quickly because of that. And so he was kind of one of the first ones that I really made videos about. Um, but yeah, to, to uh, talk about Nathan Rich, you know, the guy is, is clearly, um, it's just very obvious. He's, he's just a huge pathological liar. He, he, the, the shit that he makes up. You know, and, and I don't know um, why he feels the need to make up such weirdo shit and to say it in his videos, but he does. And it's just very obvious. Uh, as an example, when I lived in China and I told people that, you know, I went to the zoo, I would show you me at the zoo. Nathan has never really done that, you know. In my one of my last videos where I talked about Nathan, I talked about Nathan where he says that he has these conversations with Chinese people. And Nathan talks about, again, how he's, you know, he, he just lives in China, right? Like he's different. He's so different than all the other foreigners that we're all the same, but he's different. You know, he's, he's the special foreigner that, you know, goes there and doesn't care about the politics whatsoever. Which is it's complete and utter bullshit. Of course, you look at his channel and it's just pages upon pages of views of videos and shit politically. And he tells he tells this conversation, of course, like I said in my last video, how he talks to Chinese people and they're just they're so confused and flabbergasted and surprised that he's not trying to change China, that he's you know just there and observing the history. And and I find it funny because he he made another one of these videos. And, uh, you know, here we'll maybe watch a little bit of it and uh, I'll give some commentary on him and, and some other shills since I haven't uh, spoke too much of the other shills lately either. But um, let me see. I don't know if you guys can actually hear the video. We'll find out, though, I guess. Either way, he puts his own subtitles. Ooh, he, he, he had an interesting conversation with an Italian. Same, same shit, right? He had an interesting conversation with uh, some Chinese people. He always has interesting conversations, apparently, and then decides he's going to make a video and tell us about it. So uh, now, he's, now he's speaking to Italian people in China. He, he's, he's having conversations with Italians. Ooh, you know, whatever, whatever that's supposed to mean. However, that, like, adds credibility, I, you know, whatever.
Yeah, beer is not his thing. Uh, that was meth. Meth used to be his thing, but he, he doesn't do that anymore. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So we're, we're, we're 41 seconds in. And if you remember, you remember his previous videos, he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not about politics in China. I don't talk about politics in China. I just, you know, I, I live here in the history and, and uh, Chinese people are always so amazed about how, you know, whatever. But now he's now he's going to Italian people. So apparently he doesn't he doesn't talk to Chinese people in China about politics. He talks to Italian people in China about politics. What you know, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean. Uh huh. Uh huh. Because because you have to be like a, a world renowned chef, you know, to know that like some food is really shit. Like you don't have to study politics to know that that it's bullshit, you know. Uh, oh, and and here's the other thing that I find that's that's really hilarious. Uh, I'll let him speak a little more in a second here. But, you know, I've, I've seen some of this video myself and yeah. So he, he, of course, talks about his Italian friend and like how people could have a skewed view of politics. But what he doesn't understand is that he's the one with the skewed view of politics because he's in China where the politics is really one sided. And, of course, the other thing that he does that I find is really interesting is he seems like an American that is very untraveled because he, he uh, you know, he talks to his italian friend and then he he shows nbc india today cnbc you know the state department you know blah 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 blah. he, he pretty much just shows like american western politics like do, like do we have to like fucking google it here because we all know that italy has their own fucking media you know they have their own politics they don't they don't have to use cnbc they don't have to use CNN. They don't have to use Fox News. But he's he's so like one-minded and and doesn't even realize that what he's saying is is so, you know what I mean? It's so narrow-minded that they they they're reading in Italian. They're not reading fucking American news all the time over there. You know, you you can actually go and look it up of course. Uh same for Canada, same for all these these European countries. They're not just like pulling up CNBC all the time and uh, CNN and Fox News, they, they have their own media outlets, you know? So to talk to your friend about what's on CNBC, you know, bullshit, bro, bullshit. I feel like it's, it's very fucking obvious, and it's always been obvious. The, the Chinese government wants control for a reason, and that is because they want to keep themselves, you know, in power. Oh, you can't hear the audio. Yeah, I don't know how to make it that way, but at least at least the goofball has subtitles. Maybe, um, maybe I can change it, though. I'll work on it in a second here to see how to make his audio play. Um, but no, it, basically he's talking about the simple fact that uh, he talks to an Italian guy. The Italian guy says basically that the, the reason that they run with COVID is to maintain control. And of course, he's going to try to point out and be like, oh, why, 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 control? Why would they, why, why would they want to control? Uh, it, you know, it's very obvious. They, they want to control because they want to control everything. They want to control the money, the people, the businesses. They want to control all that stuff so that they can stay in power for themselves, you know. Um, and then he, he, of course, is going to try and say that that's, that's not true, even though it's terribly obvious. Um, to put things into perspective, you know, COVID is like, 
it, it's it's not nearly as dangerous as like just the fucking traffic in China is alone. Like, you know, the traffic in China, like people are just like ramming into each other and dying left and right. You know, you don't you don't see them up in arms about like fixing traffic in China. You know, you, you look at the poor food standards in China. You don't see them up in arms about like fixing that shit or or the the dangerous alcohol levels. You know, uh, it's like you, you don't you don't see them uh, going after all these things. Uh, you don't see them going after cancer. You don't see them going after, you know, whatever. But uh, COVID all of a sudden, you know, the, the COVID, yeah, it's, it's all about the fucking COVID, you know. And again, let me see if I can get his audio playing. Yeah. Keep in mind, so far, his justification in this entire video uh, is that, uh, you know, people from all over the world, including Italy, his Italian friend, thinks that it's just about control. And, and of course, you know, he's, of course, going to try to do what a lot of uh, salespeople do. He's going to say, well, maybe that's true. And then there's going to be a, a but here on the end. It's it's a. Uh, Actually, a lot of people don't know it, but Mr. Uh, Nathan Rich here, he's, uh, you know, he's hes quite the manipulator in a sense. And perhaps he gets that from the fact that he comes from that weirdo fucking cult, you know, but uh, he uses a lot of manipulation tactics in his videos that a lot of people might not even be aware of, you know, but if you have like a sales or a finance background, you know, it's, it's very obvious to you because it's all very old and outdated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Huawei. Huawei. Another, I love how like, uh, you know, it's another propaganda piece. Like Huawei always gets inserted into like every conversation about everything. That would be like me being like, oh, fucking, I got Apple AirPods on, guys. Oh, oh, oh America. Huh? Like, you know, it, it, it's so, he he's so like stuck up in the propaganda that he doesn't realize that he's accidentally throwing propaganda in all the time. You know, it's, it's fucking hilarious. And so here, uh, what he's trying to do, uh, as you can see, is he's, he's trying to mock and make fun of and disqualify the idea uh, without actually, you know, representing any truth to anything here. The the reason that they did it was because they took a, a, a city like Shanghai. And when you take a city like Shanghai and you can control a city like Shanghai, keep in mind, Shanghai is a large population city in the world. They're the most progressive really city i would say in china you pretty much have shenzhen and you have shanghai and those are the most like well-traveled people up on things people so if you can control a city like shanghai and push them indoors and force them indoors it's a really good benchmark for you it's it's really a, a good way to look and say hey if we can control these people we can easily control the rest of the people in china so the Chinese government has never really tiptoed around any situation. They've always just pushed for control in the beginning from day one. And that's exactly what they did. They were, why would they start with like some dumpy city, some dumpy town in the middle of nowhere when they could just start with Shanghai, you know?
Yeah, the, the government cares for you in China, right? This is this is his. Uh, he's going to try to convince you that the government can they, that they care for you. Uh, keep in mind that the government is the same organization that actually controls the cigarette sales in China. All cigarette sales, every single cigarette sale in China is mandated and controlled by the government. Something that is known to cause cancer. Factually, we we know that cigarettes cause cancer. Um, we know that, that cigarettes cause heart disease. But uh, you don't see the, the government putting out campaigns against cigarettes. You don't see the government single-handedly stopping the sales of cigarettes. You know, the, the government could easily stop cigarette sales overnight. They control it. They literally control it. Um, if the government cares so much about Chinese people well-being, why are they not stopping cigarette sales? Why are they not forcing car companies in China, these, these really crappy cars that just crumble up like tin cans? Why are they not forcing them to pass a test that says that your car must have a crash test rating of an 8.5 or above? If the Chinese government cares so much why are they not going from business to business, looking at the food quality and saying, hey, you've got to do better than this. This is not enough. You can't be putting your vegetables out on the ground and selling them to people. You know, if the government cares that much, why are they not doing all of these things? You know, but but all of a sudden COVID-19 is a, a big worry of theirs and, and they care for you so much over, uh, you know, COVID-19. Yeah, that's that's bullshit, you know. So. Mm hmm. Sure. Mm hmm. That's true. It is disturbing. Very disturbing. So now he, he's trying to say, well, the government and the people put in all this work, and so they're continuing with it because, of course, they don't want to just give up on the people. Again, more and more bullshit. Um, you know, we, we realized a long time ago that uh, the the zero COVID thing is bullshit. You, it, it would be like saying zero, you know, zero cold at this point, zero, you know, flu, zero, whatever. It's not going to happen. It's not going to go away. It's not going to be gone. You're not going to eradicate it. It's just not going to happen. Um, it's something that is somewhere all over the world and it's not going away. It's, it's already transformed multiple times. It's not going away. And that's something that scientists realized a long time ago, actually, about COVID is it's not going away. So this idea that, you know, they, they still care about COVID and they care about you and all, you know, it's, it's bullshit, right? It's bullshit. And Nathan is trying to tell you that he's, he's having these conversations with people you know, even an Italian guy, like, oh, he's an Italian guy, and he believes the, the Western media of CNN and Fox and rah, 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 rah. And, uh, you know, but again, he's not political, right? Such bullshit. Hmm. The only people, he says, that can hold the Chinese, the only ones that can hold the Chinese people accountable is the Chinese government. That's bullshit. People can hold themselves accountable every day in their lives. People hold themselves accountable every day, right? You know, every day you wake up, you decide that you're, you're going to, you know, drink some water. You decide you're going to get up, you're going to go to work. You decide you're going to stay home. You decide this and that. People hold themselves accountable, you know? Why, why are we always giving credit to the Chinese government? Why does the Chinese government deserve credit for, you know, something that Chinese people did? Chinese people built China. Chinese people built the buildings. Chinese people stayed inside. Chinese people did all of that, you know. Uh, you know, it's like uh, anything good that ever happens in China is because of the Chinese government. But if it's something bad, oh, it's the fucking people, you know. Uh, anytime they riot and destroy shit, oh, it's the Chinese people. You know, somebody murders someone, you know, it's like, ah, oh, they're, you know, whatever, right? It's it's the people. He was a horrible person, you know, and the government had nothing to do with that. But if it's good, it's always, you know, it's always, it's always the government, right? Hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you included. You're stuck in a bubble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think I think that's it's funny how he says like it's very simplistic. It is very simplistic. I, I, I agree in that sense. It's very simple. It's very obvious, and it's very, very uh, out in the open about what the Chinese government does, has done, has been doing for a long time, and is continuing to do in the future. It is very simplistic. It is very obvious. And the simple fact that he assumes that because it's very simple that it's the opposite, you know, is, is, is very, like, unintelligent to me. It's like, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. Probably a duck. And in this case, it, it very much is a duck, right? We know for a fact about how they use these things like COVID to control their people. We know how they use surveillance to control people. We know all these things. It's no secret. It's it, China is not the inventor of this system of communism. They, they, they forget that like the, the Westerners are the ones that created this shit. Like we made this shit. We did it first. You know, um, we have seen all of this stuff in history. We've seen it in the past. China is not doing anything new and unheard of. Everything that they're doing now, we have seen done before. You know, we, we have the history of all of this stuff. We know about it. And and to, to say that because it's happened and it's so obvious and it's so simplistic that, well, maybe there's just an alternative. Yeah, maybe, but there's not. Like, it's, it's just terribly obvious. The Chinese government is doing what it's been doing for a long time. Uh, for a while, there was an opening of foreigners, and, and it is true. Uh, there are, you know, uh, foreigners in Shanghai, but the vast majority of people are still Chinese. Let's not forget that. Let's not talk like that just because uh, there's a lot of foreigners in Shanghai. And uh, to be honest, there's more foreigners in Guangzhou, the city that I lived in, than there is Shanghai. When you say that there's a lot of foreigners in Shanghai, what he really means is there's a lot of white people. Okay. Uh, there are far more foreigners in Guangzhou than there are in Shanghai. And they still... Uh, did not do that shit like that in Guangzhou. They did horrible things where, you know, they, they took foreigners and uh, especially African and African people and walked them down the streets like slaves and kicked them out of their homes and kicked them out of their hotels. But uh, you don't see him talking about them doing that in the past, of course, and being like, well, or maybe they're just doing that again. Uh, but that's exactly what they're doing, of course. Uh, a better China. Uh, they want to make China better. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing. I, I, I think that there are a lot of Chinese people uh, within the government uh, you know, that, that uh, are, are probably within smaller government and people that are doctors and things like that, that do have, of course, you know, people that are nurses that do have their, their good goodness in them. They do have a good heart. They do want to do good things and they try to do good things, but they live in a country where the government is very underhanded, right? They do sneaky things and they don't tell people the truth and, and uh, you know, they manipulate the system in an effort to give to themselves, but they use people's good heartedness against them to let them believe that what they're doing is correct. You know, when, when you go to a doctor and you say, Hey, you know, we're, we're going to, these doctors and nurses, right? A lot of these people have become doctors and nurses because they want to help people. They want to stop people from getting sick. That's their entire purpose of life. You know, and uh, because doctors and nurses in China are not paid very well for people that don't know. But um, so these people have a lot of times this idea that they've become a doctor for the good of, of, of being. And then all of a sudden they see people dying from COVID or whatever. And then you have the government, which controls the media, telling people that it's such an insane killer and that people are dying left and right from it. And, you know, they, they legitimately see 
people in the hospitals. But what they don't understand is that what the government is doing with them, what the government is doing with the situation is very dishonest. What the government is doing is they're using it as, as an advantage to take control, to say, hey, look, people, this is what happens when you don't trust the government. Hey, you know, remember when, when COVID happened and we did all this stuff that was so great and amazing and we protected you? That's what the government's doing. But they're not giving credit to the doctors. They're not giving credit to the nurses. They're not giving credit to the police that, uh, you know, whatever, right? Um, you know, not they're, they're giving credit, of course, you know, to themselves, the Chinese government wants the credit because, again, that's how they stay in power, you know. Hmm. Hmm. Again, he, he tries to discredit it as it's unknown. It's not unknown, you know, for a guy that claims to be living in China to look at the history, like he's, he's very like forgetful. Hmm. Uh. I like I like how he gives uh, the the options. You're either either you are biased or you agree with him. That's what he really means. He when he puts like biased and open to discussion, what he really means is you're either biased or you you believe him, right? He doesn't. If you would say, well, you're open to discussion, you'd say, well, Nathan, look at the history. Look at how long the history is. Look at what's going on, right? Look at look at how China is doing things very different than a lot of other countries right and look at how china's system is very different than everyone else keep in keep in mind there are very few communist countries like china there's very few uh you know whatever however you want to label china there's very few you know countries that run their government like china right they're the only ones that really did zero 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 covid right they're the only ones that were like forcing people indoors to this extreme they're the only ones that were giving people little codes on their phones they're the only ones that were really like uh, welding people's doors shuts. They're the only one that were really arresting people in that way. Uh, you know, sure, you you had, uh, you know, like India where they were beating people and trying to force them to stay indoors. Um, you know, but when you when you look at it at the core, uh, it was really only China that was acting this certain way. Uh, and it's really only China that has a government like that. You know, they, they had the situation in North Korea too, and North Korea's got their crazy government and things like that. But it's very obvious, you know. It's very open. You you look at the history; it's very obvious to see. And the uh, the fact that Nathan Rich is going to try and act like, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you know, uh, you know, that China was just doing this out of the goodness of their heart. It's like no, no, they weren't, you know. And that you're either open for discussion or you're biased, you know. What a joke. Uh huh. You question him. You question him, even though Nathan Rich again, on his last video says he's not political. He doesn't live in in China for politic political reasons. He doesn't discuss politics. That's not his thing. He doesn't do all that. Uh, not with Chinese people anyway, because of course they think he's just magical and majestic. But no, if you see an Italian guy in China, go up to him and have a political discussion with him. Not Chinese people. Only the Italians, for some reason. What, whatever in the hell that means. I don't know why he wants us to not have conversations with Chinese people about politics, but you see those Italians. Go up to them. What about Germans? You think he wants you to have some conversations with Germans? What about Germans? Why are we only having conversations with Italians in China? I don't understand. I don't get it, you know? He uh, he only wants to have conversations with Italians. Just, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's just uh, this guy. What what a nutty guy. And it's it's just such an obvious made-up story. You know, if I came on my channel and I was like, guys, had this conversation with, uh, you know, with, with this Indian guy and he uh, said this and this and this, you'd be like, well, why didn't you just bring the Indian guy on? You know, why didn't you record the conversation? 
You know, why didn't you, uh, you know, do something to add a little more to it? Oh, that's because it's bullshit in this case. Nathan Rich is just full of shit. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to read comments. I've been streaming here for about 30 minutes. I don't want to get back into the habit of streaming for like two and a half hours. Um, but I figured I would give something, give something to people on this Sunday afternoon. So uh, Satan Rich, someone calls him Satan Rich. Yeah, you know, Nathan has a lot of names. Satan Rich is probably one of them. That's a good one. Um, yeah, and, and next time I actually get the, uh, do the stream, do a live stream, I'll probably do one, um, you know, I'll do another one sometime. I'll probably maybe do one every Sunday if I can, uh, just do a live stream every Sunday if possible, uh, and get back in the habit of just, just doing that. Uh, I'll figure out the audio situation. Hopefully you guys can hear me well. Uh, I'm using a, a microphone that should be working well. Uh, this guy is going down with the ship. Yeah, you know, Nathan Rich, uh, here's another thing. You you can look at, at, at uh, his channel, Nathan Rich, you know, going down with the ship. That is a uh, that is no joke. You, you look, he's getting 30K views, 70, 20, 40, 60 uh, on a channel. And, and notice, I haven't watched a single fucking video of his. When I tell people that I don't watch their videos, I really don't watch these shills videos. I, I literally don't. I, I give zero Fs about them at all. None of these guys are worth watching. I just watched this one because I was like, you know what? Let me uh, make some content maybe in the future. And you see, like, that was two weeks ago. That is how little I care about these guys, you know. But uh, I figured, like, let's let's put out some content. 500K subs. Think about that. And this guy's pulling 30K views. Holy shit. You know, holy shit. Let's 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 look at another one of these guys, Jayo Nation. Jayo Nation. Look at this guy. He's back to uh van life. You know, I, I told Jayo Nation a long time ago that making these videos about China and propaganda would not work. And uh, you know, didn't didn't listen, got stuck up in propaganda. Now look at his channel, 123K subs, and he's getting like, he's getting like the same amount of views that my shitty channel gets, okay? And I have 5,900 subs. I put zero fucking effort into my channel, unfortunately, and he's getting the same amount of views as me. Think about that. 123K subs. Wow. What a fucking loser. Holy shit. Look, now he's he's putting out the shorts that are getting views. Of course, these are pushed by YouTube, you know, extra hard. Um, all these sketchy shills give me the creepy vibes, except Clam Man, because Clam, yeah, Clam Man is, is definitely, he's definitely something, that's for sure. Um, Cow Juice, hello, it's 1.37 a.m. where I'm at, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, thank you, Cow Juice, for watching um, some of the other shills. Whatever happened to Barrett, Barrett. Barrett, China, these losers. Oh, they oh they're still doing it, huh? They're still making ten hours ago, twenty k views, fifty k views. See, there another one, three hundred and forty k subs. Full of bots, full of bots. You know, fifty k views, twenty k. We're going back to China. Ah, eh, bullshit. You know, it's all bullshit, right? It's all bullshit. So, Mr. Free China, Lewis, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. And uh, let's see. Nathan Rich is just weird. Yes, that's true. True, true, true. Um, let's see. Scrolling down, scrolling down. Just reading comments here. Yeah, no, um, you know, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Free China here. We will have to do something. You know, it's, it's funny, man. Uh, we used to do a lot of good videos together. And uh, we just got so busy with life. Oh, my. But no, Mr. Free China here. Uh, I remember the early days when we first started talking. And uh, you had such great content, you know. Look at that. The editing always puts in a lot of work. I'm so lazy, dude. I'll go back to editing one day doing a lot of editing. 
if for whatever reason, you know, you have seen my channel, but you haven't seen his channel, which I think is nearly impossible. He's larger than I am now. You know, check out check out his channel, of course. Lewis, great guy, great, uh, just a great person, a person I've known for a while now, you know. But, yeah, great person. Yeah, I will not sell my soul for the money I stand for free and critical thinking. Not too many people are interested in it. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny, like, in the uh, – when I lived in China, I was I was another one of those guys that I was offered the the trips to like Hainan. You know, it's like you 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 look at at Hainan and it's like you you just scroll down and you're gonna see all these people that have like gone to Hainan, and you're gonna find all these people and you're gonna be like, oh, I know them. It's like, oh, reporter Fi media. Hey, that's a shill. You know what I mean? And you can just continue to scroll down. And look, see, they're talking about these guys going to Hainan even. You know, uh, CGTN, here they are. Of course, they're going to put out their travel tourism videos, you know. And you just keep going down and down. Oh, look, Living in China shows up under a Hainan. When you type in Hainan, it comes up. Oh, look, where's Poppy, you know? these people that uh, have put out these videos and they're in the Chinese community. And it's like a lot of these people are shills because they were offered to go to Hainan just like I was, you know, when I lived in China, I was offered the free trips to Hainan, you know, just like everyone else was, you know, I, I'm definitely not special in that, in that way. And um, I just didn't do it. I looked at, at how they, they wanted you to wake up at like six in the morning and go out and how they controlled your, you, you know, everything that you had. And I was like, I don't want to do that. You know, I just don't want to do that. Uh, you know, so it, it's like, yeah, don't want to do all that bullshit. And, uh, you know, could have, could have done it and didn't. But you realize that a lot of these, a lot of these people did, you know, living Living in China, you know, you'll notice the videos, they're all the same. You've, you've got 30 people that all make the same videos because they're all following the propaganda, you know. And um, that was how it started in the, in the early days when there was only about 10 of us. And we were all on the same team, supposedly. And then all of a sudden, you realize that all the people were making the same videos. You know? It was very strange. It was like, why are they all making the same videos? Why are they all going to Hainan at the same time? Why are they all going to the same veggie and doing the same veggie dances? You know? So, do you think Guela60 will actually go back to China? Um, maybe. I mean, it, it's possible, right? I, I feel like, here's the thing. Guelo 60 is the old guy that, you know what I mean? He's the old guy that no one really cares about. He's the old retired guy. He can do whatever he wants in his life. And uh, that's not even to, to throw any shade at him. If uh, I was his age and I was retired, uh, you know, uh, I would probably do that too, right? Just constantly... Uh, you know, spend all that time and uh, go around. But I probably wouldn't get drunk and shit, you know. But uh, no. But, you know, he's going to do that, right? He could – I don't know why he chose China. China is actually the, the worst, you know, one of the worst countries for that, actually, in my opinion. I, I just – if you're going to do that, like Thailand is better, Cambodia is better. And I think that he realized that uh, a long time ago, you know. Uh, but he, he didn't really want to say it because, of course, he you know, his wife is, his wife is from China. So he's always going to have that attachment, just, just like me, you know. Uh, I'm always going to have that attachment to China, but I'm very realistic and open, uh, you know, about that. So – he, he'll always hold on to China. He could go back to China, I suppose, but, you know, or whatever. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it really matters that much. He's never really been that attached to China. He's never really learned the language. He's, he's never really, 
he just kind of lives in China, you know, like he just kind of lived there, kind of drank beer. And I don't, I don't really consider him to be someone that lived much of a China lifestyle anyways. So, I don't know. Let's see. Free China. Ha ha. The mad boomer. Oh, some like dog killing thing. I'm surprised people are still talking about that. Like you, you can actually go on and you can look up the court case and you can see that like all the charges were dropped and everything. Cause like I said, from the very beginning, like I told the truth from that about the very beginning and uh, people just made shit up. So I think it's funny that like people still even talk about it because like no one really cares. It was already disproven. But you know, as, as far as like Guelo 60 and the Barrett and uh, all those guys, like who, who else is left? Who, who is left out of the shills? Like they have all, uh, you know, whatever, you know, they have all fallen in that way. Uh, warrants are still there. No, here I'll actually, um, I can actually show. Uh, let's see. I'll actually prove um, that they're not there. Let me pull it up here real quick, just because I can. I feel like it's really pathetic that um, these people, they act like they know what they're talking about and they know so much and all of this stuff, but like they're too lazy to even do the looking themselves. You know, it really is. Let's see. It's like, if you're going to like make shit up about people, at least have evidence that is real, you know, like at least go to the website and show people like, don't just fall for what uh, people make up on the internet. You know, you really shouldn't do that. Cause then it just makes you look really stupid. People are like, Oh, this, this happened. Let's see. And I even talked about this in a video and like disproved it multiple times. But like just because it's embarrassingly stupid. So here we go. As you can see on the page here, warrant recalled withdrawn. The warrant was was called and withdrawn. A long time ago. So uh, you know, again. You have no idea what you're talking about. People just make up random shit. The reason, like I said in the beginning, that the warrant was called and withdrawn is because there was no evidence actually against me actually doing something, and I just never went back to court. You know, I think that uh, people wanted to hold that against me, to use that against me in an effort to discredit what I'm saying. But no matter what anyone has done in the past, you can't discredit what they're saying now when they have evidence, you know. So um, why are you still talking China? You will never go there again. Yeah, you're exactly right. I will never go to uh, China again. Maybe maybe for, um, you know, to visit family or friends or whatever, but have no real interest um, in going to China for travel, uh, travel purposes. Um, again, I just feel like there's better places. I just think there's better places, you know, so... Uh, Catherine's journey to the East finally left recently, not a serious show, but focused on how wonderful things in Xinjiang are and how happy Tibetans are. All the chill abandoned the boat like mouse is playing the sinking ship. Why can't they be charged with spreading fake news? Yeah, no, that's, that's one thing that, um, oh, and I didn't even notice that was a donation. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, I agree. Like that was one thing when, if you, if you in China did something like that and, you, you went out of your way to, you know, to work against the government like that, you would get in a lot of trouble. And here in, in the Western world, you can do that. You know, you can say whatever you want to say. You can do whatever you want to do. And uh, as long as you're not hurting anybody, you know, you're not going to get in trouble for it. And that's, that's using our own freedoms against us right? Uh, we allow people to say what we want them to say, you know, and, uh, 
it's unfortunate. These people should be held accountable for what they've said, what they have done. And, uh, you know, they haven't been, but they should be, you know, these people should be investigated. They should be arrested. They, they have went against their countries. They have pressed propaganda. They have taken income and gifts and things from these other countries in the form of money. They have taken things in the form of like vacations and handouts. I, imagine if, if you were getting handouts from like a terrorist organization, you know, how, how would that look? How would that be? You know what I mean? Uh, it wouldn't be allowed. But it's being allowed. And the reason that it's being allowed is because we allow these people to have these freedoms. We allow them to go to another country and to, uh, you know, make up all this random shit and uh, to talk bad about us. And then we allow them to come back. And in the case of Canada, not only do they allow them to come back, but they allow them to come back and use their medical system for free. They allow them to come back and continue making videos bad about them, you know. Um, Froggy says, do you think she will try to take Taiwan in his new term? No, no, he will not. The reason that he will not is very simple. The situation with Russia and the Ukraine was very obvious that it was a test to see what they could get away with. Um, Russia has done this multiple times where they have went and, and they have done things with the Ukraine uh, taken some of their land and things. It's, it's happened multiple times in the past, and they were doing again and trying to do now. But what it has shown is that Russia is not as strong as people thought they were. Even me, I will be very honest. I was surprised at just how weak Russia is. We knew Russia was probably not, you know, uh, on the level of say the Western world standards for for military but, you know, that they were really strong. Of course, they have nuclear weapons. They're very dangerous in that way. But we, we thought that, you know, they would easily take the Ukraine, and then they didn't. Well, the, the truth is that it would be exactly the same for Taiwan. China would not just easily take Taiwan, and the reason for that is because there would be intervention. The Western world would intervene. The Western world, uh, uh, you know, uh, they, they would get involved. And as soon as that happens, uh, it ends definitely. You know, the Chinese government, they, they, they might take Taiwan, but the loss would be so great that it, it would not be worth it. It would be like, oh, so you gained, so you gained Taiwan, but you lost millions of people. You know what I mean? Um, it just wouldn't be worth it. They, they will not uh, forcibly try to take over Taiwan by military. If anything, if anything, um, you know, if anything, what will happen is Taiwan will try to, um, you know, Taiwan will try to continue to be separate or you will get someone in that's middle grounded right now. You know, Taiwan is very uh, independent in the sense with their with their leader. Um, and then once they get a leader, if they ever get a leader in there that is more friendly with Beijing, then Beijing will try to do everything that they can to get them to become one. But do I think that uh, they will ever, you know, do I think that they will ever uh, attack Taiwan with military? No, I, I don't think so. And again, I think that uh, the fact that they're unwilling to help Russia is is evidence of that, you know. So, yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I think that being said, I think people also severely underestimate Taiwan. You know, the Western world has has uh, started to support Taiwan. And I think that if China was going to try and take Taiwan over military-wise, I think uh, they had an opportunity years ago. And I think that by now, um, the time is, is probably probably over with, you know. Four Cs, one family says, you know, I'm 30 minutes away from the largest Air Force base in Taiwan. I hear F-16s in the morning. I'm here. Exactly. Like, it's it's just, you know what I mean? They're so prepared in Taiwan now for this type of thing. They, they, they are, uh, Taiwan is not a stupid country. Their government is not stupid. They're very aware. And I think the world is very aware of how, you know, um, of how China would love to take over, you know. Uh, Taiwan, and they're aware of that and prepared for that. Um, so probably next week, since we're getting to the 50-minute mark here, I will talk about next next week. Uh, I'll just go ahead and let people know there is a uh, – uh, 
Um, let's see. There's a guy. Where is he at? Either way, there is a... Uh, I'll have to look for his video in a second. There is a guy living in Afghanistan that is making videos on YouTube. And he talks about living in a Taliban, you know, compound and how great the life is in Taliban, in, in Taliban land. Probably talk about some of that next week. I know we always talk about China and their propaganda and things like that. Talk about, you know, shills are not just, uh, we have this idea of shills just being a China thing. You know, shills are, shills are kind of everywhere, right? They're, they're, they're in other countries. They're, they're in Afghanistan. Uh, they're in terrorist organizations. These, uh, these people that are, you know, migrating from home countries to these other countries, uh, terrorist organizations or crazy communist governments and speaking out against where they're from, mostly because they're losers, you know, uh, it's, it exists, right? It's crazy. It's funny. And uh, next week, next Sunday, I will talk about that. Probably start the stream about one o'clock. So if people want to come back around, and, and this is Eastern time for those that don't know, I am I am in Florida, um, so I am Eastern time. Probably do that next uh, one one p.m. Eastern time, I suppose, and try to run for an hour. Um, you know, let's see. Um, you never would have thought that there are Taliban shields. Yeah, it's actually pretty pathetic. You watch the guy's video, and it's it's almost hard to believe. Uh, it's 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 strange. It really is. You you realize that these people are really cut from the same cloth, right? The types of people that would go to a communist country like like China, or that would go to North Korea, or these people that would go to these like weird terrorist organizations, they're they're always cut from the same cloth. They've always got some kind of weird thing about them, you know. And uh, I've seen so many, um, so many people go from living in China to returning back to America uh, or Canada or the UK. And they're, they're just like, wow, what was I thinking? Like, why did I ever move to China in that sense, you know? And, and even as an example, um, you know, even as an example, you look at people from other countries, like as an example, Serpent said, hey, he's from South Africa, moved to China. And when he had the opportunity to leave China and move to America, that is what he did. You know, this, there's no blame there. There's no, you, you can't be upset about someone wanting to move to a place to better their own lives. You know what I mean? And uh, speaking of Serpent said, hey, pull his his channel up. I haven't even watched uh, many of his videos recently. Two, two, maybe three. Turn them on for a second just to see what's going on. But, you know, to go from South Africa to China and then be like, fuck it, you know, and move to America. What, what a wonderful opportunity. You know what I mean? To, to have that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's nice to think that if you can do that, you can, because when you live somewhere like China and you leave China, you, you really, you realize that it's no joke, right? You realize that you can do better. So let's see. I got bombed and what I got bombed in Afghanistan. I've seen people die from bombing. there. not fun. War isn't video game. Yeah, that's true. You know, people, People don't understand that, like, um, it's funny because uh, watching some of this guy's videos, they they talk about how there were bombings in certain areas and things like that. And he's like, oh, it's a great, it is a great country and a great place. And it's like, yeah, but, like, there are bombings and shit happening, you know? It's like, how, how do you consider that to be, uh, you know, how do you consider that to be great? Uh, Winston is a good guy, but there are better sources for info on China than Serpentier. Um, Serpentier. I still love to call him Serpentier. 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 Serpenza. I don't care about how his name is pronounced. I really don't. And he shouldn't either. But, uh, you know, 
to, to say that there's better or worse, I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like uh, I feel like he, he gives a lot of the cultural understandings of China. Uh, he talks about a lot of the stuff that, that you really won't hear from the news, you know. Um, you, you look at, at some of his videos that have millions of views and, uh, you know, it, it's true. Like the scammers being everywhere in China, like it's true. It's You, you can't say he's lying. He shows you this stuff on camera, you know, uh, getting scammed in China on purpose. Like he did these things on purpose. Not See, that's the thing. A lot of people don't understand how difficult it is to make these videos. The reason, uh, you know, that a lot of us don't make these videos as best as we can is because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort, right? Uh, and, and maybe we can't, you know. Not a lot of people could walk around in a city like what Serpent ZA did and uh, film like he did. You know, it's not easy. I had my camera you know, where people told me I can't film in places a million times in China, you know, and, and I think that he, uh, you know, Serpent City really made Shenzhen a cool city for foreigners. Like that's how Shenzhen became such a cool city. Like when you, when you look at the time, like his video started to get really popular and the time that a lot of foreigners started moving there kind of, kind of makes a lot of sense, you know? So China Observer, China Insights, a lot of room out there to pick you apart. Yeah, 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 you know, that's the thing, like, you you can't be bothered by the Wu Mao, you can't be bothered by the stupid people. As an example, there was a guy here in my chat earlier, you know, I, I don't care, you know, these, these people think that, like, you care. They don't understand that they're another view. They don't understand that uh, they're making me money. They don't understand that they're spreading you know, attention. They don't understand that they're spreading drama and that that's good, right? That's a good thing. You know, you're literally giving attention, you know, um, you know, so it's, it's just like, uh, that's the way it is, you know, and, and I'm sure Serpent ZA is the same way. He's had to deal with the haters for a long time. Uh, Daniel Dumbro, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't really, Paid much attention to Daniel Dumbrell in such a long time. Um, he hasn't made a, a video in over a month. I think Daniel Dumbrell is mostly, I think he's mostly on Twitter now, I would say. Uh, Daniel, you know, he, uh, Daniel has done something that, that, uh, uh, I will give an accurate uh, and honest opinion about Daniel. Something that is positive is Daniel has really built his Twitter. I don't understand how the guy has built such a Twitter following, probably because he's on there 24 seven. And I, I talk shit to him a lot about it for being on there 24 seven, but the dude has really built a Twitter following. And I think that for him, like the, uh, the Twitter following is more important than his YouTube following. You know, I think he, he come to realize that, like, you know, the YouTube following will be very, you know, shortcoming. Whereas if on Twitter, he could get very quick reactions out of people and, uh, you know, things like that. So I think that's the reason that he, he doesn't care so much about videos on YouTube as much as he does, you know, being on Twitter every single day. Um but of course, you know, his, his videos are kind of the same. They're always the same, of course, going, going against the, uh, you know, following the propaganda, going against, uh, whatever's really said in the West. Look at this thumbnail. Awesome fucking thumbnail. I don't know who he paid to make that thumbnail, but it's fucking badass. Even if you don't like Daniel Dunbrill, I think that the dude is like really fucking insane. The dude, like, you know, I find Daniel Dumbrell toxic. Yes, Daniel Dumbrell is very toxic. There's like uh, very fucking toxic. That is true. Um, but look at this. Look at this thumbnail. This thumbnail is fucking awesome. Like uh, <laughs> whoever he had made that thumbnail for him. Holy shit. I didn't even watch the video. 
But I remember when I seen the thumbnail, I was just like, holy shit. What an awesome thumbnail. But uh, no, I think he's I think he's really delusional. I think he's completely wrong about a lot of shit. Um, I think he's completely crazy. I think he uh, whatever, you know, I, I, I don't like him. Um, but admittedly, he has grown a Twitter following and he had that one thumbnail that was really awesome, I thought. You know, and, and maybe these thumbnails are kind of cool looking too. But uh, no, he's probably paid someone for those, I'm sure. Um, the guy from Colombia, Colombia, for Fernando. For, what, what is his What is his channel even named anymore? He's like, he's like, I don't even. He was trying to teach her, which is such a horrible, a horrible name. Now it's like China, China, whatever. I don't even know China teacher for Pooby. For Mubi, what what is this stupid? For Pooby, what is that stupid channel name? Oh gosh, for Mubi, uh, what a horrible name! Um, no, like for for people that don't know, like I met I met this guy in real life, and uh, we were supposed to do some filming, and we didn't we didn't really like we did some filming. And uh, I used all his camera equipment because, like, um, you know, I brought my camera equipment. And this guy uh, from Mubi brought out, like, thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment. Like, he brought out, like, a cinema camera, a secondary camera, like, thousands of dollars in lenses, like, carrying cases and, like, all kinds of shit. And I was like, well, shit, bro. We'll just use your stuff then, you know, since you, uh, you know, you're going to fucking bring the entire cinema, you know, fucking thing. And so uh, we sat there and we ate food for like an hour. And really all he did was complain about Serpent Set and Law 86. And I was kind of just like, he's one of these people that has like a personal vendetta against them. Uh, you know, Guelo 60 is kind of the same way, even though Guelo 60 like made videos with Serpents at A and got help, you know. Uh, but for, for Mubi, I don't understand because, well, he comes from Colombia. He has to uh, support the CCP so that he can stay in China. But, uh, you know, I never understood this guy because... He hates Winston, you know, Serpent ZA, and he hates Law 86. He hated them from the very beginning and just sat there for an hour and a half while we were eating and just told me how much he hates them. And I'm like, I don't care. I just, I, I really don't care. I really don't. And as you can see, like, again, I don't, I haven't watched any of his videos. I don't care about these guys, you know, in the sense that, like, their content is just so terribly boring that like it's all just propaganda it's all just obvious from the very beginning why do i want to watch this guy walk around in a park you know like i don't understand jayo's wife annie moved to usa with their daughter who he admitted fathering her for money yeah um there's a lot of stuff um you know, I will be very honest. There is a lot of things that we know about people personally that um, have not been put out in an effort to, because here's the thing. Um, there's this, this idea that, like, we're trying to destroy these shills' lives. And that's not true. There are things that information that we know about Jayo that is like we could put it out on the internet and it would be terribly, you know, terribly descathing and make him look terribly bad. And uh, we don't, right? He he makes himself look bad enough, you know. Um, you know, personal conversations that he doesn't know that we have and things like that. And same things for a few other of the guys that like we could put out information about them and we don't. Because the goal is not to, to hurt these people financially or to hurt these people physically. The idea is to get them to quit spreading propaganda, right? 
to get them to see that what they're doing is wrong and uh, to discredit them for that. But we, we don't want to, you know, as an example, you, you see people even in, in my, com, my, my comment section trying to make accusations against me that have been disproven. You know, uh, we never did that about them, right? We created some correlations and things. We talked about how, you know, Nathan Rich's father, uh, or not Nathan Rich, but, uh, you know, we talked about how Daniel Dumbrell's father is like some crazy far left progressive nutso, and that's why he's that way. And, you know, we, we made those, um, you know, those correlations and shown those things. But we never put people's address out there. We never put people's uh, private information in the sense of like phone numbers or, or you know, whatever. We've never done that, and we would never cross that line. And the reason that we never did that is because those things are dangerous, and those things have happened to us. You know what I mean? So, uh, in Ningbo, expats were disgusted with him. You know, um, I don't like. I've heard that too from a lot of people. But I, I don't know that, like, to be true or whatever. But, you know, I've heard that too. But, like, uh, you know, what whatever. Uh, there was also somebody that said, like, uh, that, like, foreigners in Guangzhou hated me or something. And I was like, I didn't even hang out with people in Guangzhou, you know, foreigners in Guangzhou. I, I lived in China. My, my life in China was largely with my wife. My time in China was largely with my family. I didn't hang out with a lot of other foreigners or anything like that, really, you know, and, and that was one thing that, like, I always told people, like, I didn't go to China to hang out with a bunch of other expats, you know, did I have a couple of expat friends? Sure. Yeah. You know, like I met a few other people, but maybe I think out of all my time in China, the only expats that I ever hung out with were like two others. And it only happened like once or twice, literally, you know. Uh, I just never cared about that. When I when I lived in China, it was for my family, and my wife, um, and for my my work. You know, I didn't live there to hang out with other white people, to be honest. Um, he was supposed to be the leader of business community in Ningbo. At least that's what he tried to convince people. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. I could see that. I mean, you have to understand that that like like. Bio, Mr. Mr. Matt, he's he's always tried to do things entrepreneurial or with his, you know, with other people's money. You know, he, for those people that don't know, he tried to have like a he had like a porn site at one time where he was a porn site owner. Uh, he was like a car salesman one time. Like, you know, he's always had those types of jobs, you know, like uh, just weirdo shit. And supposedly, well, not supposedly, but his wife's family obviously is very rich or whatever. But, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I don't really care ab about that type of stuff. I think that, uh, you know, it, it's it's uh, weird that he left his family, you know, for that time or whatever. But uh, I don't care about all that stuff so much. Um because, you know, as, as long as he's not putting out the propaganda, I don't care. And I know that he still does it on Chinese media. And he has his other goofy channels. But, like, you, you look at all his shit. Like, it's all fucking weird. Like, nobody cares about those retarded bikes anyways. You know what I mean? Like, no, I'm sorry, but nobody cares about your retarded bike. You know? Um he ruined his channel that way by, by getting involved with it. So that's just the way that it is. Uh, senior rich says, I'm still in trying to understand living here, my family and business, but it's rough the past few years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it just got to the point where I was like, yeah, no more. And that's why I left China. I was like, yeah, no more. I put up with it for longer than I really wanted to and eventually just left. So that's all that it was. Well, so I think I'm going to go ahead and end uh, today's uh, stream. And uh, I will be back. We'll do another one, 1 p.m. Eastern time next Sunday. And we'll do a stream every week from now on. I'll go ahead and put it on my community tab. And uh, if you guys could go to my community tab or whatever in, in 10 minutes and give it a thumbs up and, uh, you know, share on Twitter and all that stuff, it would be 
greatly appreciated. If uh, any of you guys that were in the comments want to come on next week, um, you know, and, and uh, just have a talk or whatever, um, you know, four C's, we've had you on before, you know, and uh, it's always been nice to talk to people besides just myself. Same for uh, Lewis, who I'm sure is off having fun now, besides watching my boring channel. Uh, I'll send him a message, and hopefully I can get him on next week about this time. And uh, we can all just have conversation. We can all talk shills, talk China, and uh, just have a good time. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I do appreciate every single one of you more than you know. I'm always shocked that people watch me and listen. Thank you so much. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.